On this 32nd day of the federal government shutdown, there are finally, perhaps, the first signs of a way out. Two votes have been scheduled for Thursday in the U.S. Senate. Our own Lisa Desjardins and Yamiche Alcindor join us with the latest. Hello to both of you. Okay. So, Lisa, tell us what do we know about what is in this agreement between yeah. Leader McConnell and Senator Schumer for Thursday? All right, it's important. This is not a final deal to end, end the shutdown. Instead, this is a deal to hold two votes, which will be the first votes on funding that this Senate and this Congress will hold. Let me break down what these votes will be on Thursday. Number one, a vote on President Trump's plan. That would have $5.7 billion for a wall, plus temporary three year status for DACA recipients. Then there will be a second vote, Judy. That would be on essentially no wall funding, just a short-term bill to fund government through February 8th. Mm -hmm. You'll remember, something like that is what the last Congress, the last Senate voted for in December, uh, the short-term deal that was passed unanimously. The president said he, would re he was going to reject it at that time. And Judy, I just got off the phone with several different sources in the Senate. And I'm sorry to say that right now the expectations are that neither one of these will pass. So why are they even mm. doing this? Well, one source just told me the idea is perhaps to signal to both bases, which are locking in farther and farther, that they are doing as much as they can to appease them, but there's no solution there. So they're trying to say we need to come to the middle. These votes may end up being symbolic, but we'll be watching them closely. They are a sign of trying to get somewhere. So even if they're symbolic, uh, yeah. tell us what's in each one of these measures. Well, let's look at the, uh, the deal the president announced over the weekend quickly. First of all, as I say, $5.7 billion in that for a wall or fencing. Uh, it would also include money for border agents and detention beds, as he's requesting. It would have that three-year status for DACA recipients. But here's one reason that Democrats are outright in rejecting this. They say that it also includes provisions that would force those seeking asylum from Central American countries to do so in country, and that includes children. So any child who's brought to the border would not be allowed to request asylum under that bill. They would have to do it in that country. Democrats say this is a non-starter. Now, Yamiche, let me turn to you. How is the White House trying to sell the arguments, uh, despite what Lisa said, it may not go anywhere. What are they doing to try to sell the arguments for the bill that they support? The president is arguing these are compromised bills, especially the bill that he wants. Of course, he's saying that he got the idea for asylum and for allow, basically telling children that they have to stay in their country to seek asylum. But then he got that idea from meetings with Democrats. So the White House is basically saying, why aren't, don't you like this idea? You're the one who came up with it. They're also saying uh, that something that isn't really very interesting or something that is kind of interesting is that they're basically saying this is best for the country, that this is all about border security and the Democrats need to come somewhere. It's interesting, though, that Stephen Miller, who's, of course, a, a very high-ranking um, White House official, his plan has been to change the asylum law. So even as the White House says that this is a Democratic idea, it's really an idea that Stephen Miller uh, backs. I should also add that Larry Kudlow, who is the director of the National Economic Council, he was out at the White House today, and he said that we understand that there's human suffering, but at the end of the day, human security is at risk, and we have to keep pushing for the president's plan. The White House tonight, I just got off the phone with several sources as well, they're not sure that the, White, that the president would pass a Democratic version of this if it was to pass, even though it's a long shot that it would pass. Not sure that he would he would sign it if it passed. Meantime, there's been so much back and forth about the State of the Union address, which typically the president would give toward the end of January. Nancy Pelosi, the speaker, uh, questioned whether it should take place during the shutdown. Now, what's the latest on that? The State of the Union negotiations is basically a game of chicken right now. The <laughs> president is saying, "I'm going to the I'm going to be going giving the State of the Union. I'm going full on. I'm I'm preparing as I should." Over the weekend, the White House sent an email to the Sergeant of Arms at the at the Congress as well as how officials, they say, that we want to do a walkthrough. We want to get ready and, and start getting this set. They also say that security concerns that the Nancy Pelosi was talking about, that all of those have been resolved and that everything is basically a go. So it's really now Nancy Pelosi's um, move, whether or not she wants to say, you know what, you still can't come here, or I accept what you're saying and that you can actually come here. But we're not sure if the State of the Union is going to happen, which is pretty remarkable to think about. One week. Pretty remarkable. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember anything like it. There no. has not been anything like no. it. No. Meantime, of course, no, never been anything like the shutdown yeah. knowing this long. Either. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Michelle Sindor, Lisa Desjardins. Thank you both. Thanks.